Okay. Okay, just want to uh, share a few thoughts, um, a few verses actually from Proverbs 4. Okay. Um, Proverbs 4 is uh, the whole chapter is on wisdom, right? Um, and it's uh, it's an amazing chapter where it talks about the importance of wisdom, the importance of understanding, and uh, and there's a lot of ex exhortation to pursue wisdom, to go after understanding, and what will happen as a consequence of it. Yeah. So I just want to read a few verses. That is verse four. Um, he also taught me and said to me. Uh, he's talking about the instruction of the Father, and it says, "Let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live." Okay, so let your heart, your innermost being, uh, keep my commands. I think we've seen this earlier also that it's not a superficial thing, but you know, out of our heart we keep the commands, keep the instructions. Okay, if you go down to verse twenty, okay, it says, "My son, give attention to my words." Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Verse 22 says, For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Right? And, and so on. And then the rest of the verses again talk about keeping our heart with all diligence and so on. So there's a lot of uh, reference to wisdom and how we should actually pursue and how we should keep wisdom and, and the commands and the instructions in our heart, out of our innermost being, right? So again, just want to remind us that it's it's not when we are in a certain environment. You know, this thing is not applicable. Okay, I'm in this kind of environment, in this kind of setting. Therefore, you know, I need to be like this. No, because this eternal truth is something that we go after, pursue, and keep within our hearts, no matter where we are, okay? No matter which season of life we are in, right? I'm sure I, I, I've heard people say, okay, when I was young, when I was a teenager, or when I was a single person, you know, I used to, I this is how I kept the word of God, or this is how disciplined I was. But now, you know, all that has changed, you know, in a different season of life, and different responsibilities, and different... You know pressures of life, and or you know saying that I've left all that, right? But then here we see the instruction: no matter what season of life we are in, you know, let your heart keep my commands, right? Let your heart keep my commands. So because when we do that, it is health to our flesh, uh, and it is it is life and health to our flesh. So it affects us uh, internally. It affects us um, physically. It affects us emotionally, right? So, we, of course, we're talking about the Word of God. We're talking about wisdom uh, in general, um, how we are exhorted to do that, right? So let's let's pray. Father, we thank you for this exhortation, God, that, that no matter what environment we are in, God, no matter what season of life um, that we go through, God, Lord, we pray that we will keep your Word, Lord, from our heart, with our heart, Lord, may our heart, may our hearts, O oh Father God, retain these commands, retain the truth, Father God. And uh, even as we do that, Lord, Lord, I pray that, Lord, that our entire being, Lord, entire course of life, Lord, will be affected. That we will not be found, Lord, in the path of the sinner or the wicked or the scornful, Lord, that we will walk in the path of life. And as your word declares again, God, that the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter, shines brighter as a noonday. And Lord, we pray that let there be an elimination of ignorance, let there be an elimination of everything that might cause darkness or Lord, uh, influence of darkness, God. We pray that at our path, oh God, the, the cause of life that we walk, oh Father God, will be brighter Lord, because you are the light. You are the one who shines light on the path that we walk in, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, yeah, we've come to the last two um, topics of... 
yeah, teamwork. Okay, uh, let me just. Right. Okay, so last class when we ended, we saw that one needs to be selfless, okay? So which is the opposite of selfish or, you know, everything, um, uh, everything um, centered around us, which is the opposite of that, right? Um, that doesn't mean that we don't take care of our needs, but then, um, but to be other oriented, you know, over and over again, when we work with people, when we work as a team, we just need to have that aspect. So we also looked at how, you know, if we are selfish, if we are, you know, because of how we grew up, whatever things that have happened to us, we, if we are, you know, everything revolves around us, right? If we have that to be a stronghold in our lives, then how to deal with it, right? So, so we can give secretly, meaning, you know, even financially, uh, we can give generously, we can, you know, take a subordinate role, which means you're just part of the team, you're not leading. Um, all this will actually kill, you know, the, all that self-centeredness in our lives, right? When we compliment others, promote others uh, over us. Okay, so that is something that we saw last uh, last class. So today, well, let's look at, uh, you know, how uh, this aspect or this mindset of uh, solution-oriented, which means um, not problem-oriented, but solution-oriented, okay? So that we find a solution, find a remedy to the challenges or the, to the problems, right? So the very reason that we might be leading a team, the very reason that we might be in a place of work, right? We are employed by an organization, you know, is to solve problems, right? So in ministry also, um, yes, we are there to, you know, share the truth, share the gospel uh, in different ways, like right? minister to people, uh, within the walls of the church, outside of the church, and so on. Um, so problems become a part of what, whatever you know, we are facing. You know, there will be problems, you know, problems of various nature, uh, various um, and different kinds of problems, right? Uh, problems of inadequacy, problems of you know, maybe financially, maybe um, it could be human resource related problems, which mean people problems. So various problems, right? So uh, the thing is to have a mindset where, you know, how can I solve this, right? How can I solve this? And we can have a solution-oriented mindset only when we are, you know, positive in our outlook, right? In a positive in our outlook saying, which means that whatever truth that God declares about us, who we are right, in Christ, what we have become, um, the, the 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 fact that God indwells us, uh, the fact that He has positioned us for victory, you know, all this needs to be uh, needs to have a deep root in us. Right? Only then we will be positive. Right? Otherwise, we will be focused on the problem. See, it, it doesn't mean that we should not be aware of problems, or we should, you know, have a um, you know, kind of an escape mentality, escapist mentality. We were saying, or a mentality, or, or a uh, you know mindset of denial. We were saying, hey, this is not a problem. You know, when there is a problem, we need to acknowledge that it is a problem. Okay, there is a there is a challenge, there is a problem, but not to go on describing the problem and the magnitude of it, but to go beyond that to see what is the answer. You know, what is the solution? How can we solve it, right? To have that mindset. Okay, so, so we could have different people in our teams, you know, where one is just talking about the problem, elevating the problem, meditating on the problem, right? But then are we talking about answers? Are we talking about, okay, so how do we go about solving it? You know, we should, as a team leader, we should bring in that culture, you know, okay, this is the problem. Can we solve it? How do we go about solving it? Okay. So we know that problems are a matter of perspective in the, sen in the sense, yeah, we, we see it as a problem or we could see it as an opportunity, right? An opportunity to solve, an opportunity to overcome, an opportunity to see big results, 
we can see it you know there are so it's a it's a matter of perspective um you know where we where we say that, okay this is a problem this is a circumstance or do we see it as okay this is a solution um and we see this as a challenge it's up to us right so when we as leaders when we lead in this manner then the others also grasp that quickly hold on to that right yeah you know it is it is true that temperamentally we could be very different right we could be very negative we could be very pessimistic whereas another person could be very very optimistic right it's true right um it it could be like that but then we need to bring in this aspect of solving problems it is true that problems can stop us or they can stretch us right stretch us meaning you know whatever learnings you have whatever skill you have you go beyond whatever wherever you know whatever effort that you have put so far you go beyond that you stretch mentally physically and solve it okay um right how many how many of us have you know worked through the night for something to solve something right through the night 24 you know you work through in order to finish something you know then you realize hey i can actually do it and i wish i had started earlier <laughs> you know normally that's the thing no when we whenever we finish it i wish i had started like a month early and put in the same kind of effort or maybe half of this effort then i would have actually solved you know i would have the output would have been much better right and lot lot less stress right so yes you know there is a stretching you realize that hey i can stretch so much i can go so much whenever we face problems and that's when you realize that there is strength you know whatever we have developed over a, a period of time there is strength okay so when we look at problems you know we it can either stop us which means that you we don't begin to stretch we don't begin to use uh, our learnings to solve it or we say okay let me see let me see how i can face it let me see what i can do about this right so and then we solve it okay so especially if there are problems that we have given up halfway saying that i cannot solve it i you know i, I don't have the mental strength mostly it's a, it's a case of mental strength or a willingness to to face the problem or to you know to solve it right so suppose we come to that place where we're saying okay let me pick it up again right and solve it and i i'm not going to give it give up unless it's until it's solved yes it's taking time yes i'm making very slow progress or no progress but i'm going to do this okay so that's the mindset to have okay um so refocus our thinking on solving the problem not on you know just meditating about the problem it is also an opportunity for us to rethink our strategy okay see our our input into a particular work results in a certain kind of output okay which means maybe you we have put in you know maybe 2 hours every day and we've got this kind of result right so it it's and also maybe we went about doing things in a certain way so it's an opportunity for us to rethink what kind of effort can i put differently right whatever effort i put in has resulted in this kind of a wherever i am you know what i am doing what the team is doing right now now can i rethink whatever effort i put in okay it could be whatever you know church ministry church growth um you know whatever we've been doing so far you know to rethink the strategy rethink the process right can i change um so many times we 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 want to put in more effort but it's the same process right it's the same thing okay we think okay i need to put in more effort i need to spend more time not necessarily you know it need not be true we just may we may have to change our strategy change the way we are doing things and maybe with less effort at times right the effort need not be you don't have to double up the effort literally you know half the effort but change the strategy okay so think on those lines okay so this when we have a solution oriented approach 
it is actually forces us to think like that you know maybe even think out of the box think out thinking out of the box meaning that you know you you think uh how normally you will not think okay like for example i remember in one of the um, uh you know one of the companies that i worked in um you know we just wanted to solve, solve certain things the guys needed to work through the night on some reports okay so so the boss was really um, the sales manager he was really thinking you know in all aspects he was thinking out of the box this is this is before you know they didn't give us laptops we didn't have laptops only the top manager had laptop laptops were very expensive those days so it's like that right so only desktops so in the office the computers there with the screen the you know processor and all that so so the boss said you know the, the team was staying in a hotel and so the boss suddenly he said you know why don't we just shift the computers to the hotel four or five computers take it out of the office shift it to the hotel let them work on it right so everybody was shocked what shift the computer out of the office nobody thought like that right they were thinking okay how to get the report out in the morning and how to solve this thing you know now it seems like a easy thing right use the laptop go to an internet uh, place work through the night but then all those options were not there the only option was shift the computer physically take it to the place and do it but he was he was you know he was kind of bold enough to suggest that you know all the others were you know, how can we take it but so think out of the box and see how we can or rethink in rethinking our strategies right and see how whether it works or not but we know that you know um i think they asked a famous scientist right um how do you you know how did you come up with this invention good invention great invention how did you come up with this you know how do you succeed in this so he said you know because i succeeded in this because there were 100 other things that didn't succeed hundred other ideas hundred other inventions that he you know he put his effort into that did not succeed okay so which means that he was constantly refining the process rethinking you know how can i do this in order to solve the problem i think it i think it is edison right about the light bulb i'm not, i'm not sure yeah i'm not sure i think i think it is right it is him so he he talks about how not giving up the hundred other times right so so maybe that's something that we need to have and maybe we that is something that we need to build a, a muscle for you know meaning be strong in that as a problem solver to say that i'm not going to give up i'm going to rethink because as believers we have an extra edge because we have the spirit of wisdom knowledge and understanding right spirit of revelation and wisdom indwelling us right so we can always ask um we can always be open to his leading and uh, and be creative yeah so rethink strategies sometimes it's a question of repeating the same process but it's in a different season okay for example you know i always like to think about this um you know that as a church the central location we've always been renting or uh, you know it's a hiring for that sunday right we've always been doing that so um i remember when i initially joined as an administrator and we were meeting in one place and we had outgrown that place um but we were just continuing on but the sisters who i mean the catholic sisters who ran that place they said no you can't meet anymore we are planning to you give it to on a long term lease to someone so you can't meet in this auditorium you have to move out so and it was like just two you know two weeks notice then uh, we were just saying wondering god what do we do we need to go some place and uh, do this and and so uh, we were thinking of different options and we went to we went move to another place which opened up we went there at the same time i had also checked one other school i think maybe you've seen that european school have you were you there when we no it was probably before your time the the one is on museum road the school which is on museum road st joseph school we used to meet in that uh, auditorium so i had gone there and asked them you know we need we need place 
uh, we need to uh, this thing. Can you give us that person was there flatly refused. He said, no, no chance. We can give you probably for one week, two weeks, but you can't take it throughout, you know, not 52 Sundays in a year. We cannot be, give you that flatly refused. So we met in another place. We started meeting. Then we had to move on out of that place. Right. Um, and uh, because they were renovating it, they were going to take six months to do it. So we had to meet in another place. So this I'm talking about maybe after three years or four years, whatever. So then uh, I immediately thought of the previous place, this place where I had asked and that person said, no. I said, you know, I don't know whether we should try it because we had tried once. They said no. But somebody in the team said, OK, no, I'll go and ask anyway. Let me check. I will ask. They said, OK, fine. Because I had asked once. They refused. Maybe, you know, if you ask, maybe whatever, you know. So the, he went, first meeting, met with the person and said, you know, this is the church, will be other thing. So four years down the line, the leadership had changed over there. So this person was open. This person said, yeah, sure, come. Come next Sunday. We'll sign up. You can meet. Only thing is, when we, whenever we have a school thing, we won't, we'll tell you in advance. So after four years, the whole scenario changed. The same place. So some then, then I realized, hey, sometimes it is okay to repeat a process which you which failed, which did not open the door. It was a closed door. But now times have changed. Leadership has changed. It's in a different season. It's okay. It's okay to knock on the door. It's okay to try it out and see if it will be effective. Right? Repeat the process. Okay, so when it comes to the team, when it comes to the church, when it comes to you know, various things that we are working together, uh, when we are talking about being solution-oriented, it also means in addition to rethinking strategies, it also means revisiting some of those ways in which we did, which were not you know, which was not effective, but done now because of changed environment, changed factors, it could be. Okay, so I'm just giving a you know I'm not going too much into the specifics, but this one example is something that really um, you know clicked or any you know helped uh, in this situation so it could be anything you could try it out okay it could be an outreach method um which was um you know which was ineffective then but now maybe it will be effective right uh, it could be an uh, you know at the same time you know it is also it, it also means that something that worked earlier which is not working now have the boldness and the courage to stop it right it could be that you know that kind of a method that we used we had that open window we could actually use it but now we don't so we should have the discernment um, and also the courage to stop doing it okay okay so the next one the last one uh, is about toughness you know, the, 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 use the word tenacious. So being tenacious means being tough, being stubborn. You know, in a negative way, it will be stubbornness. Right? Don't give up. Okay. Work with determination and not waiting on, okay, I hope things will change. I hope, you know, you work. Um, and like somebody said, you know, don't stop because you're tired, but stop when the job is done. Okay? We all need times of recharging refreshing renewing but then restart right be refreshed be renewed get charged and restart the the effort right and and you stop when the job is done okay give you a hundred percent okay uh, to be tenacious means not just work harder but also work smarter okay many times we think of working hard putting in a lot of time, lot of effort, but also see, you know, is there any way where I can maximize this effort? Okay. Like we have a lot of inventions, right? Can you think of something where, where we put in a little effort and then uh, a lot of, you know, it, it creates a lot, a big impact. In physics, we learned about lever. Okay. Lever meaning? Um, uh, it's uh, let's say you know in the olden days people tried lifting it, shifting things, but they used a lever. 
you know where it is like a plank and you put it under the thing and it has a weight and you press on it and then it lifts right? the same thing to do with the pulley what is a pulley if you if you you know uh, i think the wells are very very new i mean very uh, minimal these days but you know where i grew up there was a well uh, yeah so you try lifting water out of a bucket from a well with a rope right you can pull it up like this so it takes a lot of effort you need to be a strong person to do that but if there is a pulley pulley is a wheel right and it's it's um, you know it's fastened in a place so that it rotates you put the rope through that i'm sure all of you you know you've seen the well and you use the pulley we have here <laughs> or oh, the net exactly so you use the pulley then you realize that people who are not as strong as you are in order to strength you know lift up they can also lift the same amount of water if not more uh, when they use the pulley okay so things like this so what is the pulley or what is the lever that you need in your strategy in the efforts that you're putting in find out maybe you know you're saying okay you know i'm not able to study at all you know one hour how can i study okay then there is a now they've come out with a strategy you know you give your full 100% if not more attention for 20 minutes take a break for 5 minutes and go back but you need to be disciplined to take a break for 5 minutes and go back again to give 20 minutes of undivided time take a break for 5 minutes and again so your break your your one hour is split into three periods of 20 minutes with two rest periods of 5 minutes so people find that hey this actually works right i'm able to do that i'm able to give a deep concentrated effort for 20 minutes and then i start getting distracted okay no problem rest for 5 minutes and then again give you know it's called the promodo method okay so so these kind of things are there these so this can be the pulley or this can be the be the lever for for studying right where you put in effort but it gives a great return okay so so when we say tenacious when we say tough or never giving up work hard work smart okay and when we commit to values uh, things that we hold in high esteem okay um, this always helps us they're saying okay i need to be a person of truth i need to be a person of integrity in in all that i'm doing then we are able to you know if if those are values that you hold in your heart then you're able to put in uh, uh, effort you know like punctuality and so on right um and you can even make work uh something that is competitive right something that you challenge yourself saying last time i did this and let's see you know how i can do this right how i can um so you challenge yourself okay you stretch yourself you challenge yourself and you see that how you can do things in a better way how you can put in more effort how we can put so so take things like that um make it a challenge make it a project make it a challenge for yourself right so these are things that really help us to become tenacious to be strong to be uh you know to to be to have that attitude i'm not going to give up halfway okay right okay so with that we come to the end of this course and especially this topic on teamwork see now uh, like we started when we started we saying this this whole thing of leadership is like, like a big ocean right so we we just looked at some aspects of it so in your personal study it can you can always make it um, a consistent thing you know something that we can revisit um, you know as as you go through life and see you know how can i be a better person a person who leads in a better manner right and if possible you know if if you can um, attend a conference called lead like jesus you know that is also something very very useful like lead like jesus maybe in the place where you are there could be a weekend conference or something um so that is also something that you can attend okay
okay so with that we come to the end of this course any questions or any um, any thoughts on leadership any takeaways that you want to share now feel free to share we looked at three sections so okay i need the mic okay yeah go ahead so pastor like uh, regarding teamwork only my question is from teamwork only so we talked about like is teamwork is not a one man show uh so my question is like in our team one person is like to do and able to do multi works means everybody have the responsibility he is able to do multi works so is it okay to give the more responsibility to him Okay, and so, other responsibility also to okay, him so what you're saying is this person is able to do multiple things and able to do it well yes okay so your question is should i give more responsibilities yeah. is that what you're saying yeah i mean if it is required if it is required you know for the team um, and if it is necessary you can and if the person also you know enjoys doing it why not you can do it uh, if it is required um but also i think you you just need to see whether uh, your you know be a caution cautious about whether you're overloading that one person with too much you know so while initially that person might be excited and take it up and do it but over a period of time is it affecting other areas of that person's life you know so you just need to be as a leader you need to be mindful of that um, so you don't burn out that person uh and make sure that because if you burn out then you are worse off than how you started right uh, even that one thing that he was doing is unable to do because he's reached a place of burnout so you we just need to make sure that we prevent our team members from burning out now, there's always sufficient rest recharge etc um at the same time challenge them to do more yeah okay yeah like pastor in uh, like when we are um, leading a team and uh, we have to assign certain works and uh, if a person is so enthusiastic to pick up the work all alone by himself and which we know like it's hard to manage by one person but if that person is like no i can do it will do it can we give it into a hands leaving it can't be possible with one person so you're saying the task is actually uh, it is humanly not possible for that person to do it and you know that is a reality um mm. so so the thing is to um, i mean if it's a non critical work okay non critical work I, by that i mean that uh, if that person doesn't end up doing it it's okay we can manage you know if it's a non critical task then you can try it out if you have the luxury okay you can say okay you try it for a day you give me feedback you see if you are able to otherwise i'm going to make sure that it is handled out if like uh, just to make that person understand like uh, you also need a support you can't make it alone by yourself just yeah. to taught that lesson can we give it so that when he goes into the field he knows that okay mm. i can't do it on myself i mm. need help i have to work together just to make that person understand can we do it like so i was asking yeah. just to teach a lesson can we all like yeah leave so, all the load on him and right so as a learning right as a learning for the person so the the healthy way to do it is to say okay uh, uh a healthy way to do it is to say okay you do it give a time frame try it out two days three days and i'm also going to observe i let me also you know share some feedback at the end of it okay so you also tell me so that person comes back and says hey it was very tough or the person is trying to be brave and saying no i think i feel i can do it myself then you you give your observation you know i saw this but it was actually not helping so let's you know so so it's a learning uh for that person and you can also share your uh, whatever you observed whatever your feedback is so that uh, 
the person receives it um so so we should not have a see i told you <laughs> that day itself i told you <laughs> you know that may not help you know that is not really healthy i mean it depends on your um relationship with that person you know if you're very close you can say i told you no don't do it yeah you told me that day fine no you, you can be just you know brush it aside and keep going but if it's not if it's a very formal kind of relationship this i told you that day itself won't help right so a healthy way to do it is you know uh, you try it you give me feedback i'll also observe i'll also give you feedback but then um let me decide after a couple of days so with that understanding then it'll have a help yeah okay so similar to this question like in case like person is saying okay it is tough only we can say like that so the things are not going well but the, this person said okay it is fine or we can talk to yeah so things are not going well so we need to list down what those things which are not going well okay so so that's what i'm saying you know you're giving your feedback see this is what i observed point number 1 this didn't happen to this didn't happen while you know if if there was help then this would have sufficiently you know it would have happened in a better way so this was so um let's moving forward let's not continue in this way let's do it so whatever you know because we need to have this this is the standard it didn't help so let's let's drop this method and let's do this so we can do that yeah, yeah. but we need to share that we need to and uh, yeah in an objective manner yeah that's the thing yeah uh, regarding team only <laughs> so in a team like we have a boss as uh, yeah yeah not not leader for leader on boss appointed on a team okay yeah. so leader as an associate assistant leader yeah. the team okay so in chair of a team uh, the team some people are not cooperating but the leader is saying you should cooperate with them you should teach them so how to handle the like who who are the people is not cooperating mm the cooperating is like they are not responsible they will come do work and all but they won't responsible for it okay okay so the leaders assigned to the team um so the the actual ground work is monitored by the associate leader okay so so the leader tells the associate leader that you need to work together you need to get this done but whatever is the thing is not happening so so the associate leader associate leader should um, communicate to the leader why why things are not happening uh yes we need to work together but this is a problem okay, this is the problem so why don't we address that so the associate leader and the team leader talk to the team about that particular problem okay so are the leaders also there the associate leader is also there so the leader is the one with the you know responsibility and overseeing the whole thing um so the leader is also there the associate leader is also there then you address okay this is the problem and uh, we cannot have it this way we are seeing that people are taking it easy maybe whatever the problem is you know not being on time the work not done properly you know it is there so we address it so i'm assuming the associate leader has actually tried his best or her best to talk to the team but they are not listening right so then the leader also should be there and the associate leader and then so it's not not about pointing fingers or putting one person down but what is good this is the work that needs to be done but it's not you know we're not able to get that done so the leader can give the input saying okay this needs to change and uh, guys i need you to do it in this way and the associate leader is also there so so then i think because the leader tells the associate leader, associate leader and actually the it has been delegated to the associate leader to take care of the team to finish that task now in that delegation something is not going right right and the associate leader keeps telling or the leader keeps telling the associate leader you know do it do it do it but it's not happening 
which means the leader has to step in along with the associate leader and address the matter. Right? So, and the leader can also, after that, say, okay, you know, this is how. So, so in that meeting, a couple of things can be found out. Okay, the way in which the team member is functioning, maybe not respecting delegated authority, so many things, you know, the leader can find out. The leader can also, you know, notice that well, the, the way the associate leader is directing the team, maybe they could, there should be a change, you know, maybe there should be some kind of a aligning, refining, okay? Um, so the leader can address both, you know, maybe in private to the team, the associate leader saying that this is what I noticed. If you do it in this way, maybe it will help. So, so these are ways to go about it. It's not always easy, as easy as I, how I'm saying it, you know, uh, because it involves that human element and the challenges are multi-layered, right? So, but, but this is a way to go about it and address the problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, uh... In, when we uh, see like working in a team or uh, like when uh, we all come together as a group trying to figure out things and work something, uh, it is quite possible uh, to have uh, disagreements. Disagreements, yeah. yeah. And uh, also like uh, what we think can be done may not feel, other person may not feel it's the right thing they may have a different way to approach towards it. And uh, in those situations, how we can uh, be open for correction, how, like without uh, uh, without being offensive, without taking offense, how we can make that, like be transparent and without being offensive, share our views. And also how we can come out that hesitation to share our views telling I disagree with it. I disagree with this. Yeah, how we can do it without hesitation. Yeah, yeah. So so let's say we have a team. Yeah. 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 So um, so the scenario is we have a team, we have a team leader and uh, the team leader is asking for suggestions. No. Oh. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's some, yeah, working together as a team. Uh, but there's somebody facilitating the discussions and direction or no? Sharing thoughts, sharing ideas. OK. It's, to, it's good to have one person facilitate and uh, give direction to, collect, to direct the discussion. It always helps. Uh, and normally, there will be someone who's, who's doing that. Right, who will end up doing that by default? Um, you know, in a in a whenever you have a discussion, somebody will be directing, somebody will be asking questions, and and so on. So, so it's good to have that. But if if that person is not there, then um, okay. So the thing is, uh, to it, it is a culture. Okay, it's a it, it is not an overnight thing. It is a culture. What do we mean when we say culture? It's it's like something, a custom or a tradition or an unwritten thing that we need to keep uh, building over a period of time. Okay, So we need to have that culture of openness in the team. Okay, So somebody has an idea, has a suggestion. So what will kill that if we say, OK, no, that will not work immediately. You know, we put that down, then uh, that person will stop giving ide ideas. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, they well, yeah. More, it's more out of being offended. Okay. So, but the thing is also, how do you say that? Right? Are you are you addressing the person, or are you making sure they are addressing the issue? Right. So because of the, uh, if you are addressing the person, the person and saying you always come out with these kind of ideas. Or if you're saying, you know, that's a terrible, you know, the, whatever, you know, um, 
so then it is going to the ideas will stop okay so the thing is uh, when, when you're brainstorming there will be some so, something which is totally out of the blue okay or somebody saying things for the sake of saying all those things happen right but uh, the thing is to categorize it and say okay these are these are ideas it's it's good to and uh, it's also one thing for us to even at the beginning of this whole exercise to say that guys not all things can be implemented right not all things can be implemented implemented meaning not all things can be put to practice okay but we want to hear we want to share your thoughts please go ahead and share there will be some things that we can implement uh, we can go ahead and do it but there could be other things that we cannot okay so just wanted to share but please go ahead and share it's it's important that you share we want to hear because there could be some valuable things coming out okay but there needs to be a facilitator so that they can take uh take a call and direct and say okay these are the ideas that came and this is something which is workable then let's do it okay but in the event of that person not being there it will go into a majority vote okay which may or may not be the correct thing right if majority says okay we need to cancel classes for the rest of the semester everybody thinks okay hey, that's the great idea and majority says that now going by majority may not be the right thing in all cases right so um so that's why it's good to have a facilitator it's good to have somebody giving direction because there's this whole thing called group think group think which means because of certain influencing factors or influencing people the group begins to think in a certain way losing objectivity right when you say objectivity we means okay are we looking at the problem clearly are we looking at both pros and cons are we am i letting my emotions you know uh, lack that objectivity so the the group begins to think in a certain way it's what we call as a group think so when group think happens then majority you know you decide based on majority it may not really be the most effective thing so yeah so the, the problem uh, the, the the solution is to have a culture the solution is also to communicate very clearly the expectation and the outcomes we will do this we will not do this and um, thing so somebody might say no this is a great idea why are you not taking my idea so all that can be sorted when you initially itself you set the expectation right like saying that this is what we are doing and this is it. despite that yes <laughs> you know these things could happen where people say no my idea it was a better idea you know even after the meeting is over they could be talking and you know, it was a better idea i think we should have done that it's fine you know this is you you clear say clearly you know we will we will try it out and uh, and then that would that would help yeah yeah okay i think one more minute to go any uh, any comments anything um okay as far as this course is concerned you know we've covered a lot of material we went through those three such sections and um uh you know some things you caught it in your heart in your spirit and certain things we might have to revisit you know use the material as a ready reckoner i still do go back to these books right so i suggest that you know we do that and uh, but the essence of it is something that what we've caught in our hearts in our spirits that that um, let us put to practice right uh, when we lead teams or when we are team members uh, let's do that okay okay so we'll uh, we'll wrap up we'll close here thank you so much for being part of this leadership course I uh, hope it was a blessing. Uh, God bless. Right. Bye bye. <laughs>